Dear colleagues, I would like to welcome you using this opportunity to welcome all the participants of this session. I would like to also thank the organizers for an opportunity to speak. And now I would like to share with you the studies, the trials that uh, we conduct in my center with the participation of physicists and the chemists from uh, the departments which are friendly to ours. So I would like to uh, speak about several uh, provisions, and I would like to say that the previous speakers, they simplified my mission today. So the first idea or the first concept is that as of today, the surgical interventions in the uh, skeletal muscular system uh, are accompanied in the majority of cases uh, the, uh, accompanied the use of uh, implants in order to restore the uh, bulky defects which are accompanied the tumor removal. This is a golden standard and it also allows you to ensure better functional outcomes in certain, uh, re in certain rehabilitation. At the moment we have a growth of demand in implants. This is related to the prolonged survival among oncology patients, which is enlarged because of new regimens, high effective um, regimens of treatment, and also patients, they lead to bone events. I speak about metastatic processes in the bones. And also the gro uh, growth in demand to implants also can be explained by uh, rate of certain rate of revision surgeries which are related to certain uh, peri implant events at the moment the most applicable material is the titan and the uh, titan alloys because this is exactly the material which proved its uh, biological compatibility and also it uh, can be used in completely different uh, localizations. At the same time, this is exactly the material which is associated with a number of drawbacks. First of all, I should say that the designer types of uh, solutions are not possible for uh, all the localizations. This is the first thing I'd like to say. The second is that in the post-operative uh, radio control, we have great number of problems related to imaging related to the artifacts which we can see as debris of the structure. And also the cornerstone is of course an opportunity of antibacterial protection of those implants that we use in our clinical practice. So I'd like to say that the titan alloys at the moment is far from being ideal material in terms of preventing antibacterial film or preventing antibacterial um, uh, bacterial uh, problems and um, Also, we uh, use systemic antibiotics, uh, but they are far from being ideal prevention means and methods. First of all, this is uh, uh, related to insufficient biological availability of these drugs, and also uh, they, uh, they are associated with resistance, and the uh, resistance is uh, at the moment a big problem to the majority of drugs which are used in clinical practice. Also, we should be speaking about the opportunities of antibacterial media in the very implant area because of additional properties of the implants themselves. So this is quite important and it's under-resolved. When it comes to the designer solutions, I'm going to quote an article which was published in 2015 in the uh, thoracic surgery uh, uh, journals. These are uh, data for 54 patients. In these particular cases, they use stratus and matrix, two uh, constructions, and the authors, in fact, demonstrate quite a high percentage of complication rates, uh, which are related to the uh, to different mechanic fractures or mechanic problems within the uh, implant structure. So it, it, they're related to implant failure, as a matter of fact, which uh, makes them far from ideal. So when it comes to the implant protection, there are certain uh, prospects that we see in the use of the uh, structure with a silver shielding. So uh, this is an uh, uh, article from our German colleagues who have analyzed the experience of uh, using the megaprosthesis as 
something uh, that they use for replacing the defects of long bones. And they demonstrate that the use of such silver structures will enable us to reduce by several fold the uh, rate of infection complications and in, in a number of alters, they have much better outcomes. I'd like to say that such structures, they are indicated, especially in revision surgeries, which is quite logical. And also, we can say that out of the toxic effects which can occur in the use of silver, this is polyneuropathy and uh, uh, argiosis, cirrhosis. Uh, but according to the authors of this article, per se, this is not a fatal complication. I mean the uh, presence of silver in the body system. And they uh, state quite a big range of uh, fluctuation. Uh, so from 0 to 23% uh, rate of such complication. At the same time, we should say that this is exactly something that tells us uh, that we need uh, more studies within uh, this direction. This is another very uh, curious, intriguing publication, which, is da which dates back to 2017. Uh, one public publication here uh, tells about the synergies of, between the uh, noble metals in terms of antibacterial activity. For example, when you use iridium and in uh, cumul uh, accumulation with silver, then it demonstrates better antibacterial activity in terms of uh, Staphylococcus aureus. And uh, at the same time, the titan and titan with a silver coating demonstrated the worst situation or the worst uh, sort of uh, results. The work, which dates back to 2015, also demonstrates a very good combination of uh, gold and silver, which again provides us with the best efficacy in terms of the uh, Staphylococcus aureus and uh, aeruginosa. This particular situation resulted in our trial, which uh, actually is devoted to the improvement of design and development of new system in order to restore the long bones of the th thorax. So this is the system for us, uh, which is quite convenient for us in terms of modifying the superficial properties and also uh, we also piloted them in vitro and in vivo. This is something that is supported by the Russian Federation grant. We uh, decided to uh, take the uh, design of the uh, rib implants uh, that we have been using in order to replace different defects of the thoracic wall. So this is the use of different elements, uh, including the um, mesh implants uh, from nickelium and titan. So what about the, uh, what is something that uh, doesn't, uh, that we are not uh, content with? Uh, first of all, this is instability, loosening, and uh, of the uh, and the prosthesis of the rib itself. So in transportation, in storing, in sterilization, we uh, marked that in a number of cases, uh, the uh, fixing uh, just wire can fracture and dislocate, and also there may be a disconnection of the porous uh, films or porous uh, plates, which uh, again makes it inconvenient to work with this type of design. So we decided to improve it, and we created perforation in the uh, uh, plate, in the, in the plate, and uh, then we uh, made coating from noble metals, nickel and titan, and the final one. Oh, excuse me, and the, the final one is creating such film from the nickel, nickelum and titan uh, band. This is done in the operating uh, room already after uh, we understand which implants are going to be used for this particular patient. So creation of the uh, super thin coating is done by chemical uh, sedimentation from cases just to create such thin films, we use the precursors which contain the noble metals, iridium and the gold. Uh, you can see 
that the photo of this machine is shown here on the left. This is an OCVD, which is uh, placed in the uh, institution affiliated to the Russian Academy of Sciences, which is located in Novosibirsk, and it's such very complicated conditions of very high temperatures and uh, the gaze media, as well as pressure. We do the coating uh, of um, noble metals. At the moment, we have done experimental samples already, uh, one centimeter uh, to, uh, to one centimeter, and uh, it's uh, iridium coating and combination iridium plus gold. The thickness of it accounts for 400 nanometers, the maximum thickness is two micrometers. On the right, you can see a scanning electronic um, microphoto, which shows iridium coating with nanoparticles of the gold. And I'd like to say that this um, difference in color of the sponges uh, of noble metals would depend on the height of these small columns. We managed within the year 2019, starting from the onset of, of the beginning of this uh, work, we tested the experimental uh, samples for cytotoxicity. We conducted two tests. Uh, this is mononuclear uh, cells uh, viability in, uh, during 24 and, 20, uh, and 48 hours. And the second stage was actually uh, detecting the level of uh, LDG, L LDH, excuse me. And we didn't have significant difference if compared uh, to nickel and titan, which is traditionally used in clinical practice. Subsequently, we, the creation of such coating did not result in the uh, just increase in toxicity. Further on, we are planning for the current year to continue testing of the pilot samples. We are also going to uh, study the antibacterial properties in vitro. Uh, then we are going to do the implantation to the laboratory animals with a further morphological uh, just uh, testing. And also we are going to study the uh, biophysical and chemical properties of uh, all these samples. So uh, in parallel with this experimental, uh, we conducted the first implantation of the new uh, implant design without coating. I'd like to stress this. We have not used the coating in clinical practice yet. So this is a patient of 65 years of age who suffers from the uh, kidney cancer. After the removal of the primary lesion, uh, there is a solitary metastasis in the uh, thoracic area. So on CT, you can see it very well. There is a subtotal lesion of the thorax, but with a free uh, margin in the, we did the subtotal removal of the, uh, and also we uh, made a replacement with our system. So there is a, a mesh implant, and the uh, rib implants were just uh, uh, sutured to it, so it, it is part of the sternum that we replaced, and you can see here the nickelum and the titan uh, mesh, uh, the band that I talked about it, uh, that I talked about a bit uh, earlier. So the design, in fact, provides us with a very good uh, secondary stability because uh, of the uh, coverage of the adjacent soft tissue and also the ingrowth uh, of the soft tissue into these uh, holes or uh, just punctures into in the um, blade itself. So you can see the post-operative view and the uh, uh, CT. This is topography post-operative. And this is the 3D reconstruction of the computer image. You can see here the Nicolum and the Titan structures in the position of the uh, of ribs three, five, uh, three, four, and five. We fully cover the defect of the removed sternum. In conclusion, I would like to say that as far as we see it, the new model of implant has simplified structure and uh, also it has simplified uh, mode of production. It has good fixation uh, method. 
So this fixation method provides us with a good um, functional outcome and the stable position of the implant. So uh, the uh, noble metal coverage does not uh, improve um, uh, uh, the toxicity and also we hope that the results of our work will be accepted in clinical practice. And so I would like to thank you for your attention.